Welcome back to the Motorfab YouTube channel. The Monaro is looking further away from finish than before. That's because it's all stripped out. Uh, didn't get the front end back, unfortunately. As I'll explain in this episode, it's still at the powder coaters, but it's coming. Um, the exciting part is coming of us putting everything back together. But yeah, I'll, this episode you'll see, uh, we've been doing a bit of rust repairs today. Uh, you'll see some more engine building. The engine's just about finished. Uh, the gearbox, I'll do a quick run through on that. And yeah, it's, it's getting much closer. So I'll, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. We're, we're pushed for time. I was trying to get it done for Warwick uh, for the no prep out there. I really don't think that's gonna happen. Not now that I've had to wait extra week on the, the front end. So I, um, yeah, I can't see it happening that quick. I've got too much to do, but the engine is pretty much just about built uh, very, like, a couple of hours the engine's finished the gearbox is done the converter's there tail shaft only takes one to two days uh rear end's already in the front end will have once we get it back from powder coat uh it'll be next week and i'll go through all the bush and uh ball joint assembly and setting that up putting in the car so that's that is really simple um but then it's we've got to plumb the car wire the car sort of put a seat in the car um yeah, so it's, it's the fiddly stuff. I, I don't think two weeks is, is going to cut it. it. It would if, if, if that was a customer job booked into the shop, we would easily have it snatched out in two weeks, no problems at all. But it's something I do for an hour or two after work at night time and on Saturdays. So it's, there's not enough after work and Saturdays left before then to make it. So nonetheless, we'll probably be racing bumping out there, which I'm actually really excited about. I haven't driven it, haven't raced it for a little while because of COVID, so yeah, I'm pretty excited to get out there and um, have some fun. So we'll go through, we'll do, we'll film the race meet, we'll film the setup, and uh, I'm really excited about trying to get down that no prep track. Big shout out to uh, Junga, Junga Bunga's Cash Days is uh, the race we're um, we're racing in out, out there, and um, he's a funny bloke, and he's trying to get a, a bit of a budding YouTuber, he's trying to get a YouTube channel up and running himself. Um, so I'll be happy to help him out with that, and give him any support. Here we go. Oh yeah, LS the world. Bloody LS. Get a big block Chev up you, I reckon. And um, watch out for the Monaro on the street when she's out there, champ. And uh, so yeah, so we're gonna go out and race the, the Junga Bungas cash days and um, have some fun out there. And we'll keep you all posted. So let's get into it, get this episode out the way. So just going through another important uh, phase of assembling the engine oh that's going to be perfect there so this where this rocker is a jessel shaft mount rolls on the valve we've got dummy springs in here at the moment to make this job a little bit easier it can be modified by shimming underneath here up or down these ones were had been brazed together so we're going to cut them all apart and tig them because where they are put together is not right for our application uh so I'll just go through and turn this motor. So what I'm doing is just turning the turning the motor over until we start to push the valve. Ideally what we want is that roller to be in the center of the valve when the valve's fully compressed. Obviously that's where the most pressure's on it. We're not gonna get it perfect there, but it's uh sort of as close as we've been able to get it before it was way off. Um, so we're gonna probably shim a little bit more and try to get that more precise just yet. Um, but yeah, it's just one phase of assembling the engine that has got to be done right. And it's getting all your geometry right, otherwise you are gonna end up with crook push rods and rockers and all sorts of things. So we'll go through, do all them, weld them back together, and then, yeah, get back to assembling the rest of the engine. So next step is our cam timing. Um, oh, look at that. Smoko's here. Get him, Chevy. His favorite part of the day. I'll just quickly run through that again now that Chevy stopped barking because the Smoko truck's here. But yeah, so there's our, uh, our big wheel on there. We've got a bit on our push rod. Um, like I said, I, we haven't got time. We're smashing this together in a bit of a hurry and if you're a young person wanting to learn how to do cam timing, maybe find a cam timing video that best explains that. But um, 
for now yeah I just really want to get this engine together so I won't go into the, the mathematics and all that sort of stuff of but yeah basically we find top dead center we measure we go at 50 at 50 and then that'll give us our center line split on the lobe so we can then um hey mate smoker trucks here i know and then uh we can yeah calculate and find out make sure in the right spot we've got our cam installed in the right spot so we've done that she's all good and uh onward and upward we'll keep building so done the cam timing, set up our rocker geometry height. Our gibbo is over here, taking the uh, the two pieces back together. We cut those old ones that we're replacing them with new. This thing's loaded. This thing's ready. Right, so I've set my, put all my head studs in, set my gasket down, spray my high Um Apparently it's stuff to business if you surfaces aren't ideally machined um which our heads are but a block's not so we'll put it in there anyway it can't hurt and um I just, it says i'll uh, give it 10 minutes to let the let the uh the alcohol evaporate out of it so we'll do that and then uh we'll talk this head down so moving right along it's looking good right so just pushed my head down and um hollum is all in there on all the surfaces Got my assembly ready, got my nuts and washers, my 12 points ARPs and the machine studs. So I'm gonna bolt them down. Obviously we're gonna put assembly lube both sides and under the nut and on the thread. So basically that the nut can get full torque down uh, with no friction when we're tightening it up. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go too much in detail about the engine building side of it. I'm a fabricator, I'm not an engine builder. I know enough to get by and yeah, that's about it. So um we'll get stuck into it and uh show you guys yeah just bits and pieces along the way and uh stuff like that there's plenty of engine building um channels out there there's also plenty of engine building experts on youtube that like tell you doing everything wrong but um yeah the way i see it if you get down the track and you go fast you must be doing something right your stuff keeps blowing up and then you're doing something wrong um but yeah so there it is we'll knock these heads down and i won't down i'll put the other one down tomorrow uh we did all the rockers rocker pedestals for both sides of the shaft pedestals so we can put the rockers i've ordered the oh sorry i've got to order the push rods i've got the sizes there for the push rods so i'll get those uh ready and then that's it oil pump on uh, i've just got to weld a couple of things on it where i modified the pickup and then i can put the pickup oil pump put the pan on which is over there on the dummy block still and yeah, this engine put the timing cover on. This engine's just about ready to fire up. So the box is there, converter's there. Front end is just at uh, powder coat. So hopefully I get that back on um, tomorrow or Friday and then I can um, put all the bushes and ball joints in and put this motor in. It's all, it's all come together um, pretty well. It's, uh, yeah, that, that's the thing I sort of, seems I jumped from one to the other and odd and stuff like that and it would have been nice to pull the front end out a bit earlier but i sort of needed it in there to finish the pipes and that was always a bit of a mission but yeah so i just try to coordinate it so it's all gonna come together at the uh the last minute They're all gonna go in the car right it's so a bit of an update on the motor for brake pedals this one's all installed um this is our, uh, our R&D one, as you can see, it's a bit knocked around. Uh, but R&D's all finished now, so we're not too far. I've had a lot of questions, when will they be for sale, when will they be on the website? Um, very soon, as I finish off the card, and um, our first batch won't be too far away, a few weeks. And yeah, so that's, um, it's hard to see up under there. All fits in the standard locations. Uh, the brake pedal, switch light goes back on i'm joining a jam nut modified rod and um yeah so that's it 
It's got the improved ratio, does what it should, and then we'll just go out and around. Excuse the bad camera work. Up there, I've actually made this one fit. I'm actually gonna gonna run the um, the standard uh, throttle linkage. I think it's pretty cool. Bit different. Um, and yeah, it fits. Uh, if you can see there, you got nice clearance between it, so that all fits in there. That's all bolted up. And that's that's what you have. Uh, you guys have all seen my um, episode on brakes and geometry and pressures and hydraulic ratios and lots of stuff. So I'm not going to go into detail about that. Just know that this works, and it'll be on the market very soon. You'll get the master, the modified push rod, and the pedal all ready to bolt in there so yeah keep your eyes peeled and i'll let you know on the channel when they release but it won't be too far off now so there's our big block chevy and all the glory this week i've been uh, staying back after work a couple of nights here and there and uh most nights i've got the little push rods are in there now um so yeah, we, we set up the geometry on all those uh, rockers that you would have seen so we got really good geometry now. Everything's happy. Um, so that was that to get that geometry right, we had to uh, shim knees up and down. And then once we got them happy, we tig the um, the two together so they, they can't move. And then the, the rocker can't move on top of the valve. So before we did that, we centered the roller over the valve. So at full lift, this roller is in the center of the valve that way going back backwards and forwards and because of where we take them in our rollers in the center of the valve um, that way so then push rods we've got our push rods uh, sent down from the good fellas at performance wholesale they just sent them down in a bag which was great uh, had to talk down obviously let's show that uh, we've done the cam timing pulled everything back off you saw that as well so yeah I've just got to put the sump on and the pump and the pickup um the only thing that's holding us up at the moment with the engine is the the manifold um the manifold's got to here i'll show you guys pretty common when you've had heads machined uh, just, i don't know what the film looks like so one handle over the shop so you'll see that yeah the it doesn't sit too bad but the gaskets it sort of seals but if you um if you look down, I don't know if the camera's going to be able to pick that up. There we go. So it's high on that side. So what we'll do is we'll pull it. We'll halve that gap. There you go there. So you can see that the bolt won't quite go in. Same on that side. So we need the manifold to drop down. And we're at pretty well the perfect gap here now. So when we machine some off that to drop it down, we're gonna hit on there. So we're gonna to have to machine the base and the sides. Um, I do have a mill here, but I don't have, um, I mean, for lack of a better word, the experience. Um, yeah, to basically, I could do it, but it would take me a long time to, to get that thing set up in the mill, run it true, uh, machine it down. I've not done one on both surfaces before, so I'm going to send that up to Doug up at RLC Engine Reconditioning at Kapala Bar. He did the heads for us, so um, he said, yeah, no worries, send the manifold up, and he'll machine it down, and it's going to help speed things up. And, um, yeah, then we can get the manifold on, and then the big girl's ready to fire up. So I'm pretty excited about that. So very close. The uh, big block's just about ready to go in the car. Once we get the front end back, we need the front end back built, which will be next week. You'll see the, the front end get put together, and then we can get this big block in the car, pipes are done, and the gearbox is done, the converter's there, so we can put it all together and pop it in the car. She's just about ready to fire up. Right, so here's our Turbo 400 in all its glory. I was trying to go through uh, this box. We're actually going to get together with Alex and try to film some of the assembly, but Alex has been absolutely under the pump, and so have I, so we couldn't coordinate had time to get together and he, he just smashed the gearbox out got it together for me because i was in a hurry so um i'm going to go through what's inside a little delight for you now but uh, sorry we couldn't show the build process but with 
plenty of other cars on the go you're going to get to see gearbox stuff at some stage everything that goes fast requires gearbox modification that's for sure um so in this uh it's a rollerized rear thrust bearing uh we've put a billet ford clutch hub in it we put a billet case support i showed you guys the case support uh when i bought it when we unwrapped the box um when i used to have a 400 in the ute in bumping i actually made the the case support because they're pretty hard to get over here in australia back then um now you can buy them in the cheapest chips and what that does is inside the inside the case there's uh big snap rings uh circlips australians usually call them but snap rings are americans like to call them that hold all the parts in the um in the gearbox as you put it together and that's a massive weakness with the turbo 400 is they, they break the the side of the case of snap ring tries to push forward um because there's there's little teeth around that hold the snap ring down as you go around around the the case so the um the snap ring support actually bridges the gap where some of the teeth are missing where they always break the the case out so we showed you guys that part so obviously now it's in the gearbox um we got a billet trans brake valve body in there so it's a bit of a fancy one but if you're going to buy one just buy a good one it's not that much dearer uh we got extra intermediate hp friction so there's four four intermediate frictions in there in total so give the thing a bit more bit more uh well grip so don't just don't slip so bad uh where are we machined piston direct for extra frictions obviously uh we've modified the pump for improved flow it's got a 30 32 element sprag in it um that's the other weakness of a turbo 400 is a sprag uh on the first to second gear shift the um the drum in there spins right up to engine rpm and then when you shift from first to second it actually has to go from spinning at engine rpm one direction it actually has to come to a complete stop and then spin back the other way um and it's really hard on that sprag the sprag is a little uh bearing set up with little triangulated um rollers in it and it, it actually it locks against itself if you haven't seen one you've got to sort of hang on to one to understand how it works but they uh, they've got a tendency to break on that shift now when you have a 400 even with a good uh sprag in there you've got to learn to drive with a 400 so there's a couple of no-nos with them when you're making decent power or even with lower power they'll still break the sprag so you should never start your burnout in first gear you don't want to shift one two while the wheels are spinning um and same goes if you if it's a bit loose and you're sort of pedaling the car if you shift it that's usually when they're most likely to break um because of the the load and unload and the, the free rev on and then shifting the sprag and it's got a as your thing's accelerating quick because the wheel's spun and you're trying to shift it and stop it and spin it back the other way it's generally when they'll let the sprag go uh the other thing is don't pull them back to first gear uh, that'll break the sprag every time so yeah if, if you're planning on doing a 400 which are becoming the most popular gearbox at the moment that really are popular uh, i messed around with them years ago i went to a glide but i still like my 400 but you do need to learn a bit of care and attention for to look after that sprag now there is much more well they're very expensive but you can get much stronger your 36 element sprags now and uh aluminium uh hubs and stuff like that much lighter so they're not so hard when you're spinning them up and then stopping them spinning back the other way so there is pretty bulletproof arrangements out there now but they cost a lot of money um with the one we've got here they i think they're rated to about 12 1500 horsepower um, but you still do have to be careful around that that tender area once you get used to it it's really not a problem um also in the box we've got uh we've machined the direct piston for extra frictions i think it went over that already and uh, it's also got uh, new bushes new bearings new thrust new seals new gaskets high flow filter uh friction steels band and sprag so that's everything new went in it to just basically get it up to scratch so she's yeah she's ready to rock and roll she's ready to take some power we'll take a bit of spray and hopefully go fast so there's the gearbox um you saw our second end converter we got so it's all getting ready to go back in the car as soon as we get that front end back we'll finish the last couple of things on the motor and get the box bolted up to it put it all in the car
if you're uh, if you're local, um, southeast Queensland, and you are interested in in uh, getting Alex to do some gearbox stuff here, he really is good. Um, he's pretty sort of exclusive uh, with his the way he does his work. He, he works on his own, so um, yeah, probably just grab get hold of me, send me a, a DM or a PM, and I'll um, I'll put you in touch with Alex. So uh, yeah, he he knows how to build a killer box, that's for sure. So today, uh, me and Gibbo, Gibbo and I, we've been working on the rust repairs. Uh, we just knocked this one, tucked that in there. Got a bit of focus happening. And um, yeah, we just got one more to go on this side. And then we're just working on the other side at the moment. Been doing the, uh, finishing off the brake pedal install as well. Messing around with that, some geometry and stuff, and then yeah, we're just fixing up the uh, up inside there, and then replace that panel there. We've got the same um, same little repair to do here. Now we're getting there, nearly there, and right on um, rust repairs. We're back on the rust repairs because we haven't got a front end back from the powder coaters, unfortunately. So I was hoping to get that back, so we could. Um, yeah, put the bushes and everything in and install, but that won't be till next weekend now. 